Okay, guys, welcome back, and um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Uh, this is the third part of a four-part series, mini-series of films about the user interface in the Tesla Model 3. Um, in the previous two parts, the first part, uh, which you'll see a card for, was an overview of the entire sort of screen, um, looking particularly at the information screen on the left, on the right-hand side in the UK cars. Um, for driving information and then the top buttons the buttons on the top of the screen there and what they do and um, the second video which again you'll see a card for now where we really looked at the satellite navigation went out on a little demo drive of the sat nav and hopefully gave an overview of how you can enter destinations the various ways of doing that and the various options and buttons that are on the satellite navigation part of the screen in this video we're actually going to look at the main menu and to activate the main menu you simply press the car icon on the bottom right hand corner for UK cars and the main menu comes up this is where you put all your settings basically into the car um, and I'm going to run through each and every one of those so stay tuned great guys let's jump straight in so to activate the main setting menus, I mean, use the, the little car icon on the right hand side and just touch that and that pops the screen. Um, and the first, on the left hand side on UK cars, you'll see a list of all the different screens that are available, all the different parts to this menu that are available. The first one that automatically opens is your quick controls. And these are things that the car thinks you might need to use on a more frequent basis and things that you want to get to quickly. Um, also on this screen is the glove box, by the way, I should add that. So if you wanted to open the glove box very quickly, you're on the sort of home screen there if you like. You hit that, you hit the glove box button and the glove box will open like that. Of course, I did demo in a previous video. You can also just ask the car to do that. Open the glove box. There we are. So either of those will get you into the glove box. So here we are then in the, um, the first sort of quick controls within the settings menu. And across the top there, you've got lights, first of all, exterior lights, that is. You can switch that from off, manually set it or have it on auto. I've got mine on auto and always have had. Um, you can also, if the lights are on now, you'd be able to activate the rear fog lights there, or I'm assuming if you had a performance model with front fog lights, I don't know whether the dual motor one has front, uh, long range has front fog lights or not, but I'm assuming the button would be appearing there if it did. I'm a standard range plus, so I haven't got front fog lights. Underneath that, you've got um, adjustment buttons. So if you quickly want to adjust the mirrors or the steering wheel or somebody that had taken over the driving wanted to do that, then you'd be able to do that right there. As soon as you do that, for example, if I was to adjust the steering wheel now and start using the buttons to adjust the steering wheel, it opens up the profile dialog box and asks me, do I want to save those new adjustments under my profile or just restore back to my old setting? And I'm going to restore back to my old setting um, and get rid of that. So that's that done. Um, then we've also got, so you've got the mirrors and steering wheel adjustments there. You've also got a button that allows you to fold the mirrors. Um, now you won't be able to see this because the shot isn't wide enough, but you'll certainly hear it. So you press that and it folds the mirrors in. It then also offers you the option to always fold mirrors at this location. That's really clever. So if you had a garage, for example, that was quite narrow um, and you wanted to fold the mirrors in before going into the garage, you could set that here. And then every time you go to approach the garage, it would fold the mirrors in for you. Underneath that is the window lock button that just does exactly what it says, locks the windows. And underneath that is the brightness display. You can adjust the brightness of the screen or you can have it on auto and it'll adjust to the ambient lighting. Mine is on auto uh, and that's where I always keep it. Nothing else on that quick start menu. Moving down to the next option, lights. Again, this is a repeat from the previous menu, uh, but it goes into a bit more details of being able to control the lights. So we've already talked about that top one and the rear fog lights and front fog lights if you had those fitted. Underneath that is the interior dome lights, which obviously are the ones above the screen here in the car. And again, you can have those set to off manually, on manually or auto. I've got mine on auto, so it just means that when I open the doors, those lights come on and then slowly sort of fade away. Uh, underneath there, you can have uh, auto high beam. Now, I have got this switched on and I do use it. Uh, this is where it automatically just dips the headlights when a car approaches you and switches it back up to high beam um, when you're on a clear road. I'd say 90% of the time it's pretty accurate. Um, I, uh, you can easily override it just by using the stalk. 
um, to override it uh, and I've had to do that on occasions where it probably hasn't dipped the lights quick enough and I've been flashed by a car or something. Um, but, you know, on the whole, really useful and, you know, it'll be something no, no doubt that will develop and get better over time. Um, headlights after exit is not something I've used because um, it's just not necessary. I back into my driveway anyway, so all it would do is it would be illuminate the front street in front of me. Um, but if you, you know, if you wanted the headlights to stay on for a few seconds as you exit the vehicle to light up your pathway to the house, etc., then that's where you'd activate that. Steering wheel lights, I've got those switched on, but for the life of me, I have no clue what they are. I can't see any lights around the steering wheel. So maybe somebody in the comments will tell me and solve the mystery of the steering wheel lights. Unless it's the little, it might be the little lights maybe by the scroll wheels. Those, maybe there's little LEDs in there. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'll have to, I'll have to try it in the dark or something and have a look. Um, but that's where the switch for that is, whatever it does. Next up, locks. Okay, this is where you can, um, firstly, where you can activate your own iPhone as the key for your car. Um, which is a very useful thing to have, obviously, um, and where you can bring in your other key cards as well. You can sort of delete them uh, or you can rename them uh, and all those sorts of things. So basically, you can add keys. If you wanted to add another key now, you just hit the plus button and it'll take you through the dialog box to do that. Again, you can lock the windows here and also hit the child lock so the back doors won't open if you've children in the back. Um, the next option here, walk away door lock, really useful. Uh, I use it all the time. In one of the latest updates, they've actually brought in this extra option now to exclude home. I've not activated that, but I guess if you had a garage uh, which was locked and, you know, one of the annoying things might be that every time you go in a house, when you come out, oh, you haven't brought your phone with you, but the car's locked because you've walked away. Uh, if you activated that, it would just stay, it wouldn't automatically lock the doors when you leave the car at home. Um, but for me, that's not applicable. I've only got a driveway, so I do want the car to lock as I leave the car to go into the house. So that's on for me. Um, unlock on park uh, does exactly what it says. If you've got that activated, as soon as you activate park, the doors are unlocked. Uh, and the lock confirmation sound is a little beep that you'll hear. So as you walk away, and I've got that on because sometimes when you park in a car park or something in a multi-story and you're walking away to get the lift to the shops or whatever, um, you know, you'll hear that beep and you know you've got a, an audible notification that the car has locked itself. So I always find that quite handy. Next up is display. Um, and we'll run through the settings on display quite quickly. So again, you've got daytime display, nighttime display, which sort of darkens everything, uh, turns it to sort of black mode, if you like, and auto, which does it for you when the sun sets. Uh, and that's how I've got mine. Uh, brightness we've seen before on the quick start on the quick controls menu as well. I've got that set on auto. Um, screen clean mode is really useful. Um, and in fact, I'll demo it because the screen is looking filthy after doing these videos. Um, it just allows it turns the screen to black. It also makes the screen non-responsive, so you can sort of touch it if you've got a cloth. I've got one of these little pads, which, I should, which are brilliant. I should really put a link to them because they were a great find. Um, but it makes you, you know, you can see the fingerprints really clearly uh, and you can get rid of those just like that. And then to deactivate, you just press and hold exit for three seconds and then bang, the screen comes back on. Uh, underneath there, you've also got your language selection and your region format and the navigation language as well. And then underneath there, some settings as far as the sort of clock goes whether you want 12 or 24 hour clock at the top. Um, this I spoke about in an earlier video, actually I think that's probably the first video where we talked about you know, this piece of information here in the top right hand corner of the information screen um, showing um, the mi remaining miles in distance. This is where you would alter that. So you go to display, come down to here, energy display, and you can either have it as distance as I've got it or switch it over to percentage. And you've seen that change now to 84%. I prefer it on distance. I know it's not a wholly accurate thing, uh, but I just find it a better sort of currency really to, to be able to determine uh, whether I've got enough range left in the car. Um, but do bear in mind that can be very inaccurate. Uh, now underneath that, kilometers or, or miles, I've got mine set to miles, uh, and then temperature centigrade or Fahrenheit. And then along the bottom here, um, 
On this right hand side, you've got some cards. This one should be showing my tire pressures, but I haven't reset it since inflating, so I do need to do that. But here is where you change it from bar to PSI and it would update that display there. Um, so that's pretty much that menu. I'm just gonna turn my brightness up for some reason. That's gone down, but there you are. Probably since the dark mode or something. Uh, back at 100%, there we are. Hopefully that's nice and clear on the screen. So, driving. Now this is where you can adjust some of the characteristics of the car. I've got to be honest with you, it's not something I've done. I do need to play with it a bit more. Um, I've pretty much kept it at standard all the way through, uh, but I will run through each of them. Acceleration wise, this is the standard range plus, which does 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Um, the dual motor version of this car will do 0 to 60 in 4.4 and the performance model will do it in 3.2 i believe those might be slightly inaccurate figures because they do change it now and again with software tweaks um, but you can either have it as standard acceleration or you can go to chill mode which i presume just slows that acceleration down a little bit um, because even in this car at 5.3 that is pretty nippy and you know that does you know you can definitely feel it pushing you back in your seat even in the standard range plus um, underneath that you've got the steering mode again I've not changed this since I've had the car um, it's it's still on um, standard I'm assuming comfort mode just makes it a little bit more sort of you know floppy for choice of a better word and sport probably makes it a bit more aggressive uh, I haven't played with those but that's where you'd adjust that there if you wanted to regenerative braking I have played with my wife drove the car and didn't like the uh, regenerative braking set at standard so we set it to low for her driving uh, and it just meant that when you lift your foot off the throttle the braking action isn't as aggressive on low as it is on standard I prefer, prefer it on standard and also obviously it's going to be generating more energy back into the battery on standard because it's a, a more aggressive uh, regen braking um, stopping mode, this is where you can adjust what happens when you get to stop in the car. Um, creep is to creep forward, roll is to roll forward, hold is to hold the car. Uh, I have mine set on hold and it is incredible in this car. One pedal driving in this car is awesome. Uh, even on a hill, you can drive up to a hill, take your foot, you don't touch the brake, take your foot off the throttle, it'll hold you on the crest, on the top of that hill and then when it's clear, you can just press the throttle and pull away. Uh, it, is, it is an incredible driving experience. And so I tend to keep mine on hold the whole start, the whole time. Um, slip start, never used it, but it's to help you if the vehicle gets stuck in snow, sand, or mud. Okay, so that's the driving menu done. Let's have a look at autopilot and the options there. Um, autopilot, you do need to come into this screen when you buy a brand new Tesla and actually select auto steer. It's not selected by default when you pick the car up. Um, and earlier on in the previous video, I did talk about the full self-drive visualization that you get now with traffic lights, and this is where you would activate that as well. But let's go from the top. So first of all, you can set the distance that the cruise control and autopilot uses between you and the car in front. And in my, you know, in my case here, I've got that set to the maximum, which is seven car lengths. I prefer to have a bigger distance. I think that goes down to three car lengths. No, it goes down to one, my God. Um, okay, but I'm going to keep mine on seven. Um, you can actually adjust that while you're in autopilot or cruise control by using the right hand uh, scroll wheel on the steering wheel. Um, so that's where you'd adjust that there. Auto steer, you need to activate that. It's a beta piece of software, even though it's been going for years. Um, surely at some point it's got to come off beta. Um, but that's the you know, autopilot sort of self steering element. Full self-drive visualization preview. This car doesn't have full self-drive. However, I'm able to activate the full self-drive visualization preview in my right-hand information screen, which I've done. I think it brings up uh, traffic lights, and now it road marking, stop and arrows and stuff like that appear. People appear, bins appear, um, bollards appear, all sorts, really detailed. I'll, We'll have to just do a video where I just take you for a drive and you can see what it looks like. It's all absolutely awesome. Um, speed limit warning. So over on the right hand side here, you've got the current speed limit for the road you're on uh, and you can be notified, you know, either on display that you're, you're exceeding that 
or you can have a chime. I've turned the chime off, it just goes off too often. Shouldn't be speeding, I guess. But you know, even a mile over and it goes off. So I've just got that set to display. Um, speed limit, you can set the speed limit um, to be absolute. So you can set to whatever speed you want to, uh, whatever speed you decide to choose. You could, you know, say, right, okay, I don't want to go, the car shouldn't go faster than 60 miles an hour. If you didn't want to do that, you can do it relative to the speed limit that's currently in force. So you could say, I'm going to be happy for the chime only to, to, for the speed limit to be set to 10 miles over the current speed limit or whatever. Mine set on naught because I'm a good boy. Um, okay, some really important menu settings here. Um, all about safety. This car is one of the highest rated cars for safety and end cap. Um, and you know, the technology part of that is a, is a big part of why that rating is so high. And this is where you activate some of those um, settings. Forward collision warning. Um, and I've got this set on early. Um, and I've had it actually activate a few times. And this is where maybe um, the car in front of you is all of a sudden braking to turn right and has aggressively put their brakes on. And it, on the visualization, it will come up in red and the car will even start to brake for you uh, before you can react. I mean, it is really quick. And I've had this car six weeks. And I've probably had that go off three times. Um, I'm not saying it saved me every time because I was already maybe about to apply the brake or I'd spotted it myself. Um, but certainly on one of those occasions, it's definitely helped out. So um, I like to have that set on early. Lane departure uh, avoidance. Uh, you, again, th this is a, you've got a few options here. You can switch it off altogether. So it means if you're drifting off lanes, it will do nothing to just let you drift. Uh, a warning gives you a vibration in the steering wheel if you're drifting over lane or assist will actually turn you back in. I've got that set to warning, um, so I get the vibration as I drift uh, from one lane to another without using the indicator, I should add. So if you do the indicator, you don't get any warning at all. But if you don't indicate and you drift into the next lane, you will get a warning. And then you've got underneath there, you've got emergency lane departure avoidance. And this um, is separate to the forward uh, collision warning or separate to the lane departure avoidance. This is where the system, if the system detects that by moving lanes you're actually going to come into a collision situation the car will automatically steer you back into your lane so it's not just a sort of you know you've forgotten to do the indicator and you're drifting over this is where the system detects that you could have a collision if you do move into a lane it'll pull you back in it'll also pull you back in should you get too cl too close to the side of the road as well um, blind spot collision warning chime uh, that's exactly as it sounds. Uh, if you are indicating to pull out of a lane and you haven't noticed a car in your blind spot, then you will get an audible notification of that. Um, automatic emergency braking is, you know, again linked towards uh, avoiding collisions. So if it sees that you're in a, a collision situation, the car will start to automatically brake. Um, an obstacle aware acceleration, I believe, let me check it because. Um, automatically limits acceleration and may apply the brakes if any obstacle is detected in front of your vehicles whilst driving at low speeds. So um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory there. So some really important options there to look at. Okay, so next let's go to navigation. So right here is where you can adjust the volume of the navigation. On the previous video, uh, you'll have also seen if you've watched that, actually whilst the uh, instruction is being given to you and you can hear the voice, you can just adjust the volume uh, for that on the left hand scroll wheel on the uh, UK car uh, or you can set the volume level here. Um, automatic navigation, automatically navigate to home or work uh, or to your next calendar event. That's really awesome. So if you've got something in your calendar and you've synced your ca calendar up to the car, um, if you've got a meeting to go to, when you sit in the car, it'll assume you're going to go to that meeting and it will set the navigation for you. Um, Trip Planner, which again is a beta um, piece of software, and that's where it actually stops you at superchargers um, if charging is needed to reach your destination. Um, online routing generates optimal routes and takes real-time traffic conditions into account when navigating. Uh, and you can also set here that if a, a change in route 
uh, would save you a certain number of minutes then to go ahead and do that. I've got mine set to 10 and you can also avoid uh, ferries and avoid tolls just here in this screen in the navigation. And that's it for navigation. Um, safety, uh, this is where actually you can entirely power off the car. Um, this is where you can set the speed limit mode. Um, so if you've got speed limit activated, uh, 90 miles per hour is the speed limit mode. Uh, and this is where you can also um, set sentry mode. For me, I like to keep sentry mode on all of the time. Um, just got an open driveway here, so it's useful to have that on all of the time. Um, that's where we are with that. Dash cam, save clips on honk. Uh, so this is where you, uh, simply by sounding the horn, uh, it'll automatically save the 10 minutes of buffeted video on the dash cam. Uh, by here also is where you'd format your USB drive if you've in, if put a new USB in and where you can activate uh, or deactivate a passenger airbags. Um, park chime assists is obviously your sensors as you're parking uh, and I've got mine set to uh, on so it makes quite a lot of noises. Joe mode um, was apparently a, a suggestion by a customer of Tesla and, uh, and Tesla took it on and made it a feature. So they named it after the person who came up with the idea. And it's where actually when you've, uh, you activate that mode, if you've got children asleep in the car and it will reduce the amount of noises that the car makes, you know, when, it's, uh, when you're activating autopilot and all those different sounds that come out. And then you've got your security alarm, your tilt intrusion detection and pin to drive. Pin to drive is almost a, a, a second level of security. And some would say the first level of security. I don't have it my car I must admit um, but a lot of people do and it just means that when you enter the car you've got to put a, a pin number in to be able to drive the car away so if you feel that would be a, a worthwhile thing to do this is where you activate that in your safety and security menu cabin overheat protection I've got that switched on um, and that basically means that if the car gets very hot inside the cabin which if the sun's on it there's a lot of glass on this car if the sun's on it, it can get very hot indeed. Uh, it'll switch on the air conditioning to cool the car down. Uh, allow mobile access allows your phone to connect to the car and allow keyless driving um, means that you can have your phone in your pocket and just step into the vehicle and drive away and jump out of the vehicle when you've stopped and walk away and it'll just lock the car for you. And data sharing, I'm assuming, is sharing some data with, uh, with Tesla. Service, um, this is where you might want to activate if you wanted to bring your wipers up so you could change the blades, adjust your headlights, um, where you would notify that you're doing towing, where you can reset your sensors, which I'm just about to do um, there, because I do need to do that. And that actually will show up then on the card down here in the driver's information. Um, notifications will tell you um, any past notifications that you've had. Um, and a factory reset is there as well as the um, owner's manual as well. Software, this shows you some information about um, your, the, the vehicle, the name of the vehicle, your VIN number, current mileage, uh, autopilot included, premium connectivity, which is gonna renew on the 21st of August, or will it? Stay tuned, I'm gonna do a video on whether or not you need premium connectivity and living without it. And at the very bottom here, you can request to have um, software updates a little earlier than perhaps generally you would have. Um, so I've got that switched on. That does mean, of course, now and again, you get releases that have got a few more bugs in it, but you know, you sort of balance that out. So that is pretty much it. That's a long video, I know. Uh, apologies for that. There's a lot of things to go through and hopefully uh, you'll have learned something from that video on some of the functions that are available on your car and where to go to find things. To close that menu down, just simply press that icon again. You're back to the, the sort of main menu of the car, if you like. So thank you very much indeed for tuning in. Please do like and subscribe um, and do look out for the final video in this uh, series of four videos where we're going to look at all the buttons along the bottom of the screen. Um, and uh, and just you know and look at what each of those does in turn so uh, thanks once again and I'll catch you very soon uh